I like the goosebumps. I like the anointing, but I have my part to play if I'm going to enjoy the goodness of God, the promises of God, right? I have my part to play in that and then to that result. I don't know if it's still this way or not, but 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when we were in our younger days, uh, quite frankly, a lot of people did not want to hire Christians to do their business work. Uh, if you're going to hire a contract, I, mean, I hope it's not this way today, but back then, if you had a, a fish on your card, uh, no. You know why? Because for some reason, Christians had low ethics, lack of integrity, shoddy work, procrastinated, and had no excellence. And that's, that's how, I trust is not that way now, right? Say yes. Not in, this, not in this church, right? But that's, you know, so why? Because Christians are the worst people to think God is going to do everything. God's going to do that. God's going to make me successful. I can wake up one day and boom, I'm successful. Millions of dollars in my mailbox. Really? That's not how it works. So I don't mean to burst your bubble, but you can have that, you can have that picture. I just need to help you clarify how it comes to pass, okay? That's what this series is all about. You're going to find it very helpful, I trust. James chapter 1, verse 22, let's put that on the screen. Do not merely listen to the word and so, so what? Deceive yourself. Hey, what a great service we had. What I preach on last week? What I teach the week before? Or is this an event on your calendar? Are you kind of... I'm starting to meddle a little bit, aren't I? Don't hear, just hear the word and deceive yourself thinking that everything's going to work that way. Do what it says. Don't you hate personal responsibility? <laughs> I mean, don't you wish we had a no-fault Christian faith, just like no-fault insurance? It's like, I don't have to do anything. It's just going to show up. Do what it says. Okay, next verse. Anyone, I guess that include all of us, right? Who listens to the word but does not, help me out, say that two-letter word. Do. do what it says is like someone looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they'll be blessed. This is the good part right here. They'll be blessed in what they do. Now, what do you think James is trying to get across? Do something. Do something. You got to be involved in this process. God wants you to have every promise, but there's a part you play in it. There's a part you play. I remember the time we were uh, in a class, several years, this is before we pastored a church, we were taking a Bible class at a church. Um, and so at this church, they were raising funds for a building program one night. They had a Sunday night service. And this woman weeping, she knew we were in the financial ministry. We had our financial companies. And she came up and said, you know, she's upset, distraught, because she would love to sow into this project, but she has no money. She's living you know, hand to mouth. I mean, she's just living on the edge. She's a single mom. And, you know, oh, I wish there's something you could do for me. You know, I wouldn't have pastored them at Gary. And what can I do? And she told us her story. And so eventually I gave her a hundred dollar bill that night and said, this is yours. Now my intent was to make sure she knew that it was her, she could spend it. And I wasn't sewing through her. I gave her the money. I said, this is yours. You can do what you want to with it. Right? But if she wanted to sew it that night because she was distraught, she had nothing to sew, she could, she could sew it. So I gave her the money. That was fine. Two weeks later, however, I went to the class at this church, not knowing that she volunteered there at times. I walk in the church, and she's at the front desk. Now, as I pulled in the parking lot before I walked in there, there is this gorgeous, brand-new, red sports car convertible five-speed that caught my attention. I mean, it was beautiful. Temporary tags, sparkling, brand new. So I walked in. I thought, man, I wonder whose car that is. So I asked her, I said, whose car is that? And she kind of looked up at me kind of sheepishly. Uh, that's mine. My mind immediately didn't connect. Wait a minute. This is the same girl that was 
couldn't find $2 to rub together a couple weeks ago. And here she has this brand new expensive. I said, that, that, that's your car? And she could see I was kind of shocked. Don't worry, Gary, I didn't buy it. I leased it. <laughs> well, what's the payment? Now, this is 25 years ago. The payment was $550 a month 25 years ago. It's kind of like the uh, couple that called me in desperation. As you know, we worked with families for 34 years in the financial field. We're going to lose our house. Can you come by and talk to us? Sure, that's, that's what we do. So we went to their house, and they're in tears, both husband and wife in tears, negative budget, upside down, can't find cash, payments behind on the mortgage. They're scared. What do we do? So the way I operated was I would gather data, go back to my office. I'd come back to their house a week later while I had time to research their data, see if there are ways to move money around, find money, do some, move assets around, whatever I could do to find money. And I was pretty pleased. I found enough money to get their budget in the positive and to get them on the road to paying debt off. And I was pretty happy about that. So the second visit, as I came to their house to share the good news that I'd found, I was kind of surprised in the driveway was a brand new highest end Cadillac with a temporary tag. I'm thinking, of course, what you would think. It's a neighbor, someone's visiting, it's a relative. You know, I'm thinking what you're thinking, right? And so I'm sitting down and say, hey, great news, guys. Got great news. Found some cash, got you in a positive cash flow. By the way, who's, that's a nice Cadillac. Whose is that? Oh, that's ours. You can imagine my mind just went blank. It's like, this isn't computing. This is yours? Oh, yes, they said. We knew when you came back, you would tell us to stop using debt. So we knew we only had one week to, to go into debt before you came back. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So people need to be taught. They need to understand their side of the equation, how they work, how God works, and know their responsibility. I know that's not a tough word, responsibility. Personal responsibility is not very popular. But it has tremendous rewards, my friend. You and God together can do amazing things. In fact, the Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Not that you get to watch God do all things on behalf of you. 